As the American Hotel and Lodging Association celebrates 100 years of hospitality, we look back on the events and innovations that have shaped our rich history. To be a hotelier in 1910 at one of the 10,000 hotels nationwide meant serving guests who most likely shared a room with a complete stranger and waited in line for a bathroom. As railroads crisscrossed the country, air travel was becoming a reality. But with progress came problems, including deadbeats, check forgers, dishonest and undesirable employees, and crooks of all descriptions. To cope with these and other issues, an organization later to be known as the American Hotel Association was formed on January 31, 1910 in Chicago. A few years later, the scope was broadened to include promotional, legislative, and educational programs. The Roaring Twenties constituted a golden age for the industry as some of the most venerable hotels opened their doors. The association broadened its reach and partnered with state associations that held similar goals. President Coolidge helped the industry grow even more by signing the American Highway System Bill and motels quickly sprang up, giving rise to an iconic American architecture. The industry, however, soon felt the effects of the Great Depression. Occupancy rates tumbled to their lowest point in recorded history. By 1932, nearly three quarters of the nation's hotels were in financial trouble. But providing service was still a way of life for hoteliers. Many hotels didn't hesitate to set up canteens at their own expense to feed the locals. Forging through more challenges with the onset of World War II, hoteliers operated with a greatly depleted staff as hotel employees by the thousands entered the military. Hundreds of hotels were taken over by the government. Occupancy skyrocketed and the high demand for hotel rooms made it a common sight to see people sleeping in lobbies. The association looked for new ways to service an evolving industry. Founding the Educational Institute in 1951 and the Foundation in 1953. That same decade, the association created a universal credit card, which eventually became the American Express card. Around that same time, a single bill would change the face of the industry. The interstate highway system enabled hundreds of roadside hotels to be built off main arteries throughout the country. Competition began to increase, spawning improvements in an array of both customer service and guest amenities, including the first in-room minibar. And the innovations continued. All suite properties were introduced and limited service properties began to multiply. For the first time, motels outnumbered hotels. To heighten guest satisfaction, hotels began offering in-room movies and toll-free phone numbers. In New York City, where the association had been since it began, we decided we had to move because of the expense. And we thought that we ought to look at Washington and, and uh, then other cities and, and other places that you know, tried to uh, talk us into their city because it's, it, was a, it was a big deal back then. Facing high inflation and interest rates, the industry continued exploring innovative niche products focused on price, facility, and services. This gave rise to the birth of the boutique hotel, which forever changed the industry's landscape. By 1997, the industry enjoyed a net profit of $17 billion, more than that of the previous 10 years combined. And an entirely new way of doing business took the industry by storm making reservations online. I think the way that reservations are made have changed a lot. If you think about 40, 50 years ago, most of us received reservations through the voice channel, through the phone. And about 15 years ago, many brands started launching their websites. And today, those websites, along with other electronic channels, account for 80% of the business that the brands deliver to the hotels. The internet has really changed the way we do business. But the industry fell from this peak performance in 2000 with the burst of the dot-com bubble and the impact of 9-11. As the industry regained its footing, 
hotels once again sought innovation as a way to attract guests. The infamous bed wars, in-room Wi-Fi, and the greening of the industry all personify hotelier's quest to offer an experience to complement guests' lifestyles. Uh, the future for our industry, I think, is in the hiring of talented uh, em employees at all levels. Uh, and I think it's incumbent upon us all to reach out to colleges, universities, high schools, the parents of the children, to, to let them know that we have a very professional uh, industry with uh, over 285 career opportunities, uh, that it can be wealth generating, entrepreneurial, they can actually own hotels or pieces of hotels, uh, and we need uh, good uh, line level employees as well as management and senior management. I think uh, what the industry needs to do for the future is, is focus on its people and inclusion. Uh, I think that uh, from the boardrooms to the corporate offices to the uh, executive teams to, to, to the ownership, I think people need to, to make sure that the, the people in those places mirror the changing population. The company in the future that realizes that people are the most important aspect is the company that's going to be on the top. To be a hotelier in 2010 at one of the 45,000 hotels nationwide means viewing the next 100 years as a continuation of our legacy and one that builds a better tomorrow for all those whom the industry touches. You know, as I look into the, the future, you know, we've gone through some dramatic changes in our industry. We're going to see even greater changes as we move forward. Uh, and they're going to be really based on technology, on design, and customer preference. Uh, it is hard to believe today that what is going to become a standard in the future in our guest room and technology has yet to be developed. We're going to see the design change as a customer's preference change. We're going to move faster than we ever moved before in this industry. It's a time when we're going to see us grow both domestically and internationally and really become that global village for travel.